Pie, it's what's for dinner. Welcome back to At The Table. Um, today we have a really great recipe that is gonna be a little bit of a spin on a traditional shepherd's pie. Now shepherd's pie um, is a very traditional meal that typically has um, ground beef, ground turk or ground turkey, typically ground beef, and then usually it consists of gravy and mashed potatoes. So we're gonna do a little bit of a spin on this um, just to make it a healthier alternative. Um, it, it will have tons of flavor. It will still be absolutely delicious, but it might be a little bit different than that traditional shepherd's pie that you might be thinking of. So what we are gonna start with um, is going ahead and getting our onion chopped up. Um, we are gonna be using one medium onion, um, and then we also have some mushrooms that we're throwing in and some thyme. So we'll go ahead and start with the onion. Now, I've showed you guys several times how to chop that onion. It's very simple. Um, I went ahead and took the outside off of that, the um, skin part off, and then we're just going to cut the, the um, non-root end. So the root end is with the hair, you keep that. We're gonna cut off the stem end. And then what I like to do is cut it in half. And our recipe calls for a, a cup of onions, but I'm just, this is a small, a fairly small onion. We're just gonna use that whole thing. So then we go in where those grooves are and we just make some little cuts, not quite going through the root. And then you chop it up the other direction. And then you've already got your little pieces already done. So you don't have to do a whole lot of chopping with that. And then we'll do the same thing for the other side. Now, one thing that I have been using quite a bit at home lately, just because I've been a little bit more lazy, um, are frozen onions. And you can actually buy onions already diced, already cut up in the frozen vegetable section. Um, and that is just really convenient. You don't have to cry. You don't have to, um, you know, have that make your nose run or anything like that. It's just frozen and you can go straight from the freezer to your pan with those or to whatever you're, you're cooking if you're baking something with onions. So that is a great alternative if you really enjoy onions but you're like me and you hate crying um, whenever you're cutting them up. All right, so up next we've got our thyme and we are going to um, just chop up a little bit of this. We only need about a teaspoon. And y'all have seen me work with thyme before. It is one of my favorites to work with, um, but it smells really good. You actually just take your, your finger and just pull it straight down and it comes right off. It's very, very easy to work with. You can also use dried thyme here. If you um, don't have fresh available, that's perfectly okay. But I love fresh just because it does, um, just has so much flavor. Now, when you are using dried herbs in place of fresh, it is a little bit more concentrated. Um, so think about, I've used this analogy before, but think about raisins, um, grapes versus raisins. And if you have um, grapes and you dry them into raisins, the raisins are a little bit sweeter than those grapes just because all of the sugar is gonna be more concentrated. So same concept here, if you're using fresh herbs, you're gonna to need to use a little bit more. If you're using dried herbs, you're gonna to need to cut that back. So here we've got a teaspoon of fresh. If you were using dried, you'd use a quarter of a teaspoon of dried. All right, that should be good enough. And then I'm just gonna take my knife and just run that through. So anytime you're using herbs, you want to just make sure that you 
um, do either break that open somehow, cut it up, or you could, um, or the, you might have seen some of the famous chefs like slap the herbs. That just helps to release the, uh, the oils that are naturally in whatever herb you're using. All right, so we've got our onions, our thyme, and then we have mushrooms. And we will need a whole um, eight ounces of baby bella mushrooms. Um, so we're gonna be using all of those. So I'm gonna add a little bit of oil to our pan. And this is about two tablespoons. We'll get our pan on. And we'll just let that heat up a little bit. And we're using olive oil here instead of butter. Um, the benefit of that is just using those unsaturated fats. So any type of fat that is solid at room temperature. So think about your butter, think about lard, think about um, your coconut oil, any of those that are solid at room temperature are actually a saturated fat. Um, and that is what we are more concerned about with heart disease. So your unsaturated fats are gonna be things that are liquid at room temperature. So any, most of your vegetable oils, olive oil, canola oil, regular vegetable oil, um, we choose olive oil just because it has some really great health benefits associated with it. It's very affordable. Um, you can choose some of the other oils like grapeseed or uh, avocado oil, and it's whatever you prefer. They're just a little bit more pricey. So I'm gonna throw all of this stuff into our pan. We will see you guys back in just one second. Whether you're returning from a family vacation, coming back from college, or even returning from serving our country, we know there's no place like home. And here at Performance Forward, we want to make sure you get there. That's why every Performance Certified Vehicle comes with the Performance Lifetime Powertrain Warranty. Performance Forward, welcome home. Introducing the Star Communications app. All the tools you need in one convenient location. You can access Watch TV everywhere. Check local channel lineup. Check your Star email. View and pay your Star bill. Report troubles. Use your Star security app. Check your home voicemail. Sign up for CrowdFiber. Check your Wi-Fi speed. The list keeps going and going. Download for free from the App Store or Google Play. All right, so we have all of our ingredients added. Now remember, when you are um, ever scraping against your cutting board, use the back of that knife blade instead of the actual blade of the knife. Um, the difference here is that when you are using the blade of your knife, you're dulling your knife, and so it's gonna start to dull that down, which we don't want. A sharp knife is our friend. Um, so flip it on over and just scrape with the, the other side. And we're done with that. So I'm just gonna scoop that out of the way. Our mushrooms are already smelling good, so um, we're just gonna mix all this together and cook it for about seven minutes until the mushrooms are, are cooked pretty thoroughly. Your onions start to get a little bit translucent. And while that is cooking, we're gonna go ahead and do our potatoes. So um, I went ahead, this is two pounds of potatoes. I went ahead and boiled these and um, removed the peeling so you guys can see it's just whole potato. Um, and we are gonna actually use olive oil and salt to do these. Um, so I'm gonna add, I think it's about two tablespoons of olive oil, yep. Yeah. And then I'm just gonna do a little sprinkle of salt, like half a teaspoon. And then we're using a low fat milk. So um, just brought some milk from home because I didn't want to buy a whole thing of it for this show today. So this is just a half a cup of 1% milk. Um, you can use any kind of milk that you have. Um, we try to aim for that low fat milk just because it is lower in fat. We try to choose 1% or non-fat milk. So I'm just gonna mash these up. This is always my task at Thanksgiving and Christmas when I beg my mom to make mashed potatoes. She'll make them if I mash them for her. So you start to get pretty good at it after a little while, but it does take some, 
some elbow grease, some, some strength in there to get them kind of, um, kind of mashed up. I did try a new trick when I boiled my potatoes, but I'm not gonna lie, it didn't work as well. I've seen it floating around the internet. It's like, I'll just give it a try, but it's where you take your knife and you cut in the, around the um, potato, keep the skin on and boil it that way. And then the skin is actually supposed to peel right off. Um, it didn't peel quite as well as you see on the internet. Um, it might depend on the potatoes that you use, but it did peel off fairly easily. And I really do think that it, it was easier to do than peeling the whole potato prior to, um, prior to boiling it. That is the way my mom has always done it. She's peeled the potatoes. I've helped with that step too. Um, fun fact, mashed potatoes are definitely my favorite food, but I like them to be loaded with the butter and the evaporated milk and um, all the good stuff. So I don't tend to eat mashed potatoes very frequently just because if I'm gonna eat them, I want them to be loaded with all that good, good yummy stuff that's not necessarily good for my body. So that is a sometimes food for me. Um, but if you enjoy them this way, this is a great alternative to still have your mashed potatoes, but they're not quite loaded um, with all that butter, that fat that, that we kind of want to avoid. So these are looking good. They're pretty much mashed all the way through. I like mine chunky. If you want to, you could use a, um, a blender here or a um, hand with hand blender and blend them up that way um, to smooth them out. So personal preference here, you make it however you enjoy it. And you can also adjust in terms of the milk that you're adding. So you could taste here and see if you want to add a little bit more milk, a little bit more um, salt to this just for flavor purposes. Now remember that we are actually going to be taking these mashed potatoes and putting them on top of our shepherd's pie dish. So they are going to be baked in the oven. Um, so they're going to be cooked a little bit, um, cooked more through, I guess, than if you were just having your traditional mashed potatoes. Um, so it'll just be a different flavor. So keep that in mind as you're tasting and you're testing it out. Um, it might not be something that you really need to add much to to make it taste good because it's going to be mixed all together. Shepherd's pie just reminds me of uh, when you go to Thanksgiving and you have all of the food that you just mix all together and you some people just put all the food on their plate and they just spin it all together, mix it all together and eat it just like that. Um, it is very similar to that because you've got different flavors, different textures all in one dish but it is really, really good. So if you haven't tried it, I encourage you to give it a shot. And the, the benefit of this one is it does include um, those healthy vegetables in there. We've got some onions, mushrooms, and we also use peas and carrots in this. And then we are using that lean meat. So we're using um, chicken, a lean chicken here. And then um, we're using low fat. So there's not really a whole lot of bad stuff in here for you. It's just a one pot meal that has all the good stuff in it. So these are almost done. We'll see you guys back in just a second to finish up our filling mixture. Getting a new car or truck doesn't have to be difficult or expensive. Just let Performance Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram swap keys with you. Bring in your current vehicle, we'll swap keys and get you into a new car with Performance Peace of Mind Lifetime Powertrain Warranty for the same or less than you're paying now. We've got a lot full of vehicles to choose from and there's never been a better time to shop than to start something new sales event. It's about performance and performance is taking care of you. Many things have been stolen away during this time of uncertainty. No crowds to cheer on their favorite teams, applause and pageantry have been stripped away. Thieves are looking to make your home empty and silent. Star Communications has the answer you are looking for. Security by Star. Automation and affordability along with friendly service makes for a security choice that is sure to keep your family cheering. All right, so our onions and mushrooms are done and um, they look good, they browned a little bit, they smell delicious. So we're gonna add 
some wine in actually. And this is not a cooking wine. This is just a dry wine. This is half a cup. Um, and you're just gonna cook that for about one to two minutes and until it's kind of evaporated out. Now, when you're cooking with wine, um, it does, the, the alcohol content does cook out of whatever you're making. So if you have kids or something, you don't have to be concerned that you're gonna be giving them alcohol um, because it does, it tends to cook out and it's perfectly okay. Um, and what we're doing here is we are gonna let that evaporate out a little bit. So we're gonna let it cook for about one to two minutes and begin to just kind of cook out of what we're, we're making here. And wine does, it just gives your food a really different flavor. If you've never tried cooking with wine, I definitely recommend it. Um, it just, sometimes if I'll add it to a dish, I forget how good wine, um, wine helps to bring out the flavors of what you're eating. So definitely give that a shot. We did use um, just a regular dry wine, but you could use, in, use like a, a cooking sherry wine if you prefer to do that. The only thing is your cooking wines, if it's labeled cooking on the bottle, um, it tends to have a little bit more sodium. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to watch your sodium, maybe choose a dry wine or a, just a regular share, bottle of dry sherry um, that will be a little bit less sodium, have less sodium in there for you. So we're gonna let that cook out a little bit. While that's doing its thing, we're gonna move on to, um, this is kind of like our gravy. So we have three tablespoons of flour here, just regular white flour. And then I'm gonna add one and a half cups of chicken stock. Um, now I actually made this myself yesterday. And I'll tell you a little bit about how I did that. So if you remember on one of our shows that we did um, a few weeks ago, we had a a whole chicken that we cooked in the oven. And so the rest, the remain, remaining carcass of that chicken, um, I actually threw it into a freezer bag and froze it because I knew that we were gonna be making a recipe soon to make my own chicken stock or chicken broth. Um, so what I did was I actually put it all into a pot with, I used it straight from frozen because it was gonna simmer for several hours. And I added um, a whole onion, and I think it was two carrots and celery, two ribs of celery and the carcass. And then you use um, a quart of water. So one quart to one pound of chicken, we had about one pound of chicken carcass. Um, and we just let that sit simmer on my stovetop. You bring it to a boil first and then you let it simmer on your stovetop for three to four hours and then strain it. Um, you can actually see in this one, there's still a little bit of sediment. This is from the seasonings that I used. So I did use ground pepper. I didn't have whole peppercorns. So that would have been ideal. Um, and then I used bay leaves and it's one other seasoning that's escaped my brain. But you add your seasonings in and um, that might settle. But when you strain that, you'll get a lot of that out and then you refrigerate it overnight, skim any of the excess fat off the top, and you've got your own homemade chicken broth or chicken stock. Didn't add any salt to this, so this is sodium free, which is the benefit of making your own. It's also extremely simple. I mean, just as I told you, I made it yesterday. It didn't take any time. I was doing some other stuff around my house while that, while that sat on the stove, and it smelled so good. So we're just gonna add that together and whisk it up. You could use like an actual whisk here if you prefer to do that. I'm just a fork girl, this is just what I gravitate towards. So we're gonna just kinda whisk this all together before adding it to the pan. That way we get a lot of that flour all mixed in. Um, if you have any chunks, you can kinda push them against the bowl to Break that up a little bit. And then this will just help to thicken up our mushroom um, and onions mixture here. This will kind of be like our gravy. So this is our kind of mushroom gravy that we've got going on. So I'm gonna throw that in. Some little ex extra on the bottom here. And we're gonna let that cook for about one to two minutes as well. So mix it all together. 
Then as you could see, there wasn't a ton of liquid left in in terms of the, the wine prior to us throwing in that um, flour and chicken broth mixture. So that is what you want. You want it to start cooking out. Um, you can start to smell the wine. It just smells so good. I'm gonna push this up a little bit. So that's pretty much it. We're gonna add in our chicken, our peas and carrots, a little bit of salt and pepper to this, and then we'll mix it all together and throw it into our dish and put our um, mashed potatoes on top and bake it. So very quick and simple. Um, we're gonna let our gravy thicken up first, and as that, while that's doing that, we'll go to a quick break and we'll see you guys back in just a minute. Life exciting, even when it's not. Watch TV everywhere from Star Communications. After completing my contract, I still have to buy out of it? Come on, here's your sign. Switch to the sign that's keeping home secure and customers happy all over the area. Security from Star Communications. We pride ourselves on fair pricing and quick, friendly service every time. Somebody try to break into this place? Security from Star Communications. All right, so our gravy has thickened up really nicely. I did go ahead and taste it while we were on our break and just see how the flavor was going. Go ahead and determine, do I need a little bit more salt, pepper, any other seasonings? Um, so I did add a little bit more salt. I actually didn't add salt in the beginning. So when we first started with the onions, mushrooms, and the thyme, um, the recipe technically calls for a half a teaspoon of salt while you're doing that. I tend to just salt all at once. Um, also salting later in the cooking process will make it taste a little bit stronger so it's not cooking out. So um, I like to just wait and that is what I did here is waited till it was thickened up to the point where it's pretty much ready to be added to the dish and then tasted it to see what it might still need. So we always recommend tasting your dishes while you are cooking. Um, that ensures that whatever you're making will be good because you have tried it throughout. You know what it needed before you get to the table and you're like, well, this really could have used more cheese or more um, seasoning or more spices or whatever it might be. So that looks good. We are gonna add in our chicken. We're gonna add all the rest of our ingredients. So this is um, also chicken that was left over from when we made that whole chicken that we baked. And I just took two cups out of that that I had chopped up and threw it into the freezer so that we could use it for later. So don't forget that there are really, instead of just throwing things out or hoping, you know, maybe I'll get to eat that later this week. If you just really don't think you're gonna make it to consuming that, um, or maybe it's been three days and you haven't eaten enough of something yet. If it is a um, freezer friendly food, throw it into a freezer friendly container or um, a freezer bag and freeze it because there are tons of other things that you can do with that, whatever that food is. Um, and really you're saving money. So if you're not, if you're not using it, it's probably gonna go into the trash can, right? And we want to avoid that. So I did add a cup of frozen peas and carrots. Um, you could go fresh here if you wanted to. Frozen is something that, I tend to have peas and carrots on hand pretty easily um, in my freezer. It's not bad to be stocked up on vegetables so that you know that uh, you have those as a go-to if maybe you've got a busy week, you haven't had time to run to the grocery store. I'm just gonna add a little bit of pepper here And we're just gonna let that kind of heat through for about, probably been about a minute at this point. We're using an eight by eight um, casserole dish. So we're gonna put this all in here and then top it with our mashed potatoes. You do, when you put this in the oven, you'll wanna set this dish on a baking sheet 
just in case it spills over, it doesn't get all over your, um, your oven. That is never fun to clean an oven, but it is something we should do more frequently than we probably do. But if you can avoid spills and things like that, then you'll have to do it a whole lot less. All right, so that's all mixed together. So I'm gonna throw this into our baking dish. I did spray my baking dish with about, um, with just a little bit of cooking spray so that it won't stick. Probably not necessary. I just hate to have a bunch of food stuck to my dish. So just a precaution that I like to go ahead and take care of. So we've got some good color here, those vegetables, and then of course our chicken. All right, so that's all flattened down. Next is the good part, right? Those mashed potatoes. So I've, I've seen people do these a couple different ways. Um, if you have really creamy mashed potatoes, these are a little bit more thick and chunky. Um, then you could just spread those right across. Some people just do it in big old globs and dab it on there. You do whatever seems easiest at the time, which for this, it's a little bit more of the glob in the glob category. And we're gonna bake this for about 30 to 35 minutes, um, just until those potatoes start to get a little bit brown in the oven. Um, so you wanna keep an eye on it. You want your, your filling with that inner part to be nice and bubbly when you go to pull this out. So really simple here, really simple ingredients. Hopefully this is something that you wouldn't have to buy a whole lot of stuff for. I mean, a lot of times we tend to have chicken broth already in our, um, already in our pantry or in our refrigerator if we've used that previously. Um, potatoes don't really go bad as, as quickly as some of our other vegetables if they're stored properly. Um, so store those in a dark pantry that's cool. Um, and then you've got some frozen vegetables that hopefully you already have on hand. So really it's just picking up maybe a few ingredients. So this dish really doesn't require a whole, whole lot um, of food ingredients to purchase to make this. So that is it. That is our finished product or almost finished product. Um, we're going to get this bad boy in the oven and then we'll show you guys what it looks like. Thank you so much for joining me today. We will see you guys back next time.